Divine Truth Events These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the general discussion series. And it is a question and answer session from people in San Diego. Presented by Jesus on the 2nd of November 2013 in San Diego, California, USA. This is session one, part one. Does that make sense? Yep. Far away with your okay. personal. <coughs> so I have heard you mention that and there's been many cases where you've shared with individuals their biggest block to receiving divine love and divine truth. Mm -hmm. And fast forward four, five, six years later, they still haven't addressed that issue. Um, and perhaps it'd be valuable for you to maybe uh, talk about that a little bit, but also I would love for you, if you wouldn't mind sharing with me what you feel is my biggest block <laughs> to receiving more divine love and divine truth so that I can do my best in <laughs> moving forward and progressing. Sure. Um, probably I'd like to answer your question a little generally first. So should we do that? The biggest blocks associated with receiving divine love are five blocks primarily. And they're related to the five core things that I've tried to share with people, particularly over the last few months. And the putting it to de together discussion that uh, I think is on the YouTube now um, outlines those five things. Um, just... Can you remember what they are, for those of you who've looked at it? So, truth, truth humility, love, faith, and will. Okay, so let's put them in the order that I feel we need to engage them, <laughs> shall we? Faith, will, humility, truth, and love. Okay. Why do you reckon I've used that order? <laughs> Can you see? Well, firstly, if you don't have any faith at all, it's highly unlikely you will use your will to be humble, receive some truth, and want to be more loving. Does that make sense? So, so somehow, there's going to have to be some faith starting the process start start and and it's not faith in me or any other person it's faith that god exists that god has love to give you some very basic concepts about god in fact that we need to have faith about that god's created a universe that's loving and some very basic principles like that if we don't have that underlying faith in god's nature it is highly unlikely we will ever engage wanting to know more about God or wanting to receive love from God. So if you believe, for example, if you believe that God is a punishing God, would you like to receive love from a punishing God? Well, some people do want to do that, but I'd say if I felt that God was a punishing God, I definitely wouldn't want to receive anything from that God. I'd be too worried about God punishing me for whatever I received, right? So that, that, would, that would cause a lot of problems. So unless we have faith in God's nature, it's highly unlikely that we will use our will, our free will that God's given us as a gift, to engage a process to connect to God. Now, let's say we do have faith. So we do believe at least that God's got some love to give us, let's say, and that God exists. Now, initially, for many of us, we don't even believe those two things, right? So, so a lot of the emotions that we need to work through first are dealing with the fact that we don't even believe that yet don't even believe that god exists or that god's got love to give us or many of us believe that we god might have love to give other people but not us uh, we have this sometimes this feeling that we don't deserve god's love as well and that's going to also impact upon our will because it's highly unlikely you will ask for love if you feel before you start, that you don't deserve it. Can you see that? Yeah. But let's say you do eventually generate some faith inside of yourself where you feel that God's got some love to give, that God exists, and that you have the capacity, desire, and also knowledge that you have the worth to receive it. Right? Then it's highly likely then that you will start to engage your will. 
you will start to want to do things. Two, open yourself to the reception of that love. In other words, the will is going to need to be engaged in harmony with the faith that you've generated within yourself. And faith is based upon facts. Right? Not, it's not based upon fictions or, or just imagination. It's based upon facts. It, and in fact, if it's without the basis of facts, it's not faith at all. It's just concepts or ideas. True faith is always based on facts. And facts, once we gather the facts, we eventually will engage our will to actually learn more and, and go through a process. That's what we eventually do. Now, once we engage our will, uh, if we use the microphone, so there's a the microphone. Just, um, when you say faith, mm -hmm. I think of faith as no facts. Exactly, that's how most people think of faith. Most people believe faith means no facts. But can I illustrate the kind of faith we're going to need? Um, let's compare it with what the world's done with science for a moment. Right? So if you think about the scientific achievements we've made. In the 1960s they, and the 1950s, and it actually started in the 40s, the space program began, right? And then in the 1950s it ramped up and then it was a big, there was a big competition between your country and the Russian government, of course, trying to be the first people into space. Now, why did mankind take the risk to go into space? Because it is a risk, isn't it? Like, you've got to develop life support systems. And who knows, you might shoot somebody out there and they never come back. If you do it wrong, that's certainly the case, right? Now, what caused them to believe that if you shot somebody out there, they would be able to get back? What caused them to believe that? Facts. They had gained facts about what? Gravity is one of the facts that they'd gained. What else? Okay, so they needed to know about what we live on, which is not just oxygen, but a mixture of... of they needed to know about how, the, how water is going to fluctuate and be used in space. They had to know propulsion. They had to understand space in the sense that it was a vacuum, that once you pointed somebody in a certain direction, you were going to go in that direction except when gravity takes over. They had to know. Now, these are all facts that they had gained through previous scientific experiments. Is that not true? So they now had all these facts that caused them to have faith that they could shoot somebody up into the space, make them go around the moon and even land on the moon and then get back home and tell of their experience. But they didn't know that it would actually be achievable until they did it, but they believed with all of their heart because if they didn't believe with all their heart, they wouldn't have tried it. They believed with all their heart that because of what they knew about all of these facts, they could have the faith that shooting someone off into space meant, and getting them back was achievable. Does that make sense? Now that's exactly the same with our faith about God. That's the same kind of basis that we need to have. So we need to start experimenting with what is God's nature and characteristics and we need to develop enough knowledge or facts about that to actually generate enough faith that we can use our will to connect to God otherwise we'll never do it we'll never do it and so to me faith is always based on facts and I would never choose to connect to God unless I had good factual evidence that would suggest that it was worth trying does that make sense now, I know a lot of people on earth think about faith completely different to that. And, I, and I, I don't understand, actually, the way faith is achieved on earth for many people because they have faith in what I believe is no facts at all. And that, obviously, is not going to be very conducive to you using your will firmly in a certain direction. You have to... And this whole concept of blind faith, to me... 
is a complete oxymoron. Like, like, it's, like, it's complete opposite of two terms. There's no such thing as being blind when you have faith, right? There's no such thing as that, in my opinion. What we need to do is base our faith upon the facts that we've discovered about the universe. And in this case, if we're developing a relationship with God, between ourselves and God, there's two parts in that. We need to know about God's nature and we need to know about our own. We need to know facts about our own nature and facts about God's nature before we're going to develop any faith to that such a connection between ourselves and God is possible. Does that make sense? So, I feel faith is based on facts. When it's based on facts, it is solid. It has a good foundation. Right? Once you've got a solid foundation to your faith, you will be motivated to use your will to discover things, to do more things, to move in some direction. But if you have no faith, it's highly unlikely you will motivate your will to discover new things in the relationship with God. Highly unlikely. And so I find the majority of people struggle with these concepts because they are still struggling with the facts. Right? So whenever I am uncertain about something, and this still applies to me now, I always go back, what are the facts that I have already established and what are the things that I've yet to establish? But isn't it the uncertainty that makes you have faith? Um, I don't feel it's the uncertainty that makes you have faith. No, as I've pointed out here, I'm saying... That's just, that's just, that's a physical. If you're speaking to the mic... Oh, that's a physical thing. I'm talking about faith as faith. So am I. I'm talking about... That. See, I, what I find is very logical is that on one hand we do this with physical things, but we don't do it with spiritual things. And what I'm suggesting to you is we need to do this with spiritual things just as much as we do it with physical things. We need to be like scientists when it comes to spiritual things just as much as we are like scientists with physical things. That's what we need well, to do. If you have faith, you just know. You don't have to have proof. You know. I, I don't agree. There's no way you know. How can of you know? Of course you do. You know because you, you know. No, you don't. You've had no personal experience, so you don't know. I have personal experience. Well, that's when you know, but that's because of the gathering of some facts. If you've had a personal experience of something that is true, then you've gathered some facts. Okay. Then you can know. But before that, you can't know. It's only just in the it's not on the physical level. I agree, but what we do physically is the same as what we need to do spiritually. We need to gather the facts. The way we gather facts is a bit different, but we still need to gather the facts. Does that make sense? Yep. And if we go back to 